Good afternoon and welcome everyone. Uh, hopefully everybody was able to enjoy the wonderful weather that we had yesterday. That was a, certainly a nice day. Uh, special announcements for today. I have two. Uh, this morning, or this afternoon, I should say, I got a uh, phone call that Evelyn Haynes, a longtime member here at St. Mark, has passed away. Uh, calling hours will be one week from today on Saturday from 12 to 1, and then the service will follow at 1 o'clock at Fredhold Funeral Home. Um, she's been in uh, a nursing home for uh, several years. I'm not sure that I remember exactly how many. Um, but she's been part of St. Mark for so long, I figure a, n a number of you know uh, Evelyn Haynes. Uh, second, as you probably know, Camp Pioneer ceased operation uh, recently, and there is a group who is trying to restart Pioneer. It's called Friends of Pioneer. So I am giving you a little bit of a heads up that if you see some information in the near future, uh, this is an organization that is um, purchasing Camp Pioneer, and they are going to be starting over. Um, they will in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies and grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In the Lutheran Church, Psalm 46 is very important to us. That was the psalm that Martin Luther used as the foundation for the hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And he relied upon this to give him strength in many times of trouble in his life. With today, with us selling Reformation, or celebrating Reformation, I thought we would include Psalm 46 today. And I'd like us to uh, read Psalm 46 together. So if you would join with me. 
God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. In light of verse 10, I thought it reasonable for us to sing, Be still, my soul. Verse 1. The first reading is from Revelation chapter 14. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an ex- eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, whom God put forward as a proclamation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say, You will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father, 
Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, personally, I enjoy uh, the Reformation celebration each year. Why would you, why would I do that, you might ask? It has to do with the clear focus on the gospel of Jesus Christ that transforms lives and relationships. That's the essential part of Reformation each year. Today, we're going to explore this through the theme of fear, faith, and freedom. These three words, I believe, are strongly connected in a person's life, and it impacts our relationships. In our readings today, the word fear, it's only mentioned twice. The first one was in Psalm 46 that you guys joined in with me. In verses 1 through 3, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Although the earth gives way, Though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. So you've got all of this chaos going on, these powerful outward circumstances that cause our world to change, yet it says in here, we will not fear. You know, the natural internal reaction when your world is falling apart is fear. You may feel fear when you feel as if you are overwhelmed by what is happening around you. Or you can feel fear when you feel as if you are weak or inferior or powerless to do anything about the circumstances. What are some of the other causes of a world crumbling and then causing feelings of fear? It could be failure of some sort, could be the collapse of an industry that causes job losses, and well, you happen to be in that area of work. It could be some personal mistake that you have made or a sin that committed that turns a person's life upside down. Maybe you've had to go through that at some point in time, either something you've done or something someone else did, but it turned your world absolutely upside down. It could be ongoing conflict. Oh, there's one that creates fear in people's lives because it creates uncertainty, and uncertainty will create fear. There are lots of circumstances that can cause fear. Now, Martin Luther, as I mentioned, Psalm 46 was very important to him in his life. He experienced fear because in his life, he had arrest warrants and death threats against him. And they were put out by the leaders of the country in which he lived. Why? Because he had the courage to speak and to write about being saved through Jesus Christ alone. That was the reason. Can you imagine having an arrest warrant simply because of your faith? Hmm. Where do you go for protection and strength when you are experiencing fear, no matter what the cause? If your world is falling apart... Where do you go for protection and strength? How do you obtain courage to face the circumstances that you have? This world and its great variety of self-help books and all of the self-help teachers will give you all sorts of options, and the main one is look within yourself and find your strength there. Well, that's nice, That can be helpful from time to time. But I believe we have something better. In our text today, it invites us to turn to the Lord of heaven and earth. We take refuge in him. He is the one that can provide you protection, provide you refuge, provide you courage. He is the one that can 
open the way so that you can have a clear path to follow. That's what he wants us to do there in Psalm 46. I want to turn our attention now to the second use of the word fear. And this is very different. It's Revelation chapter 14, verse 7, where it says, and he, being the angel, said with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory. Now, this is a very different kind of fear. This is using fear with the definition of awe and reverence. Give awe and reverence to God. This is to worship God in faith, recognizing his power and might. Now, the circumstances in this world may be powerful enough to really create trouble for you, but it is saying trust in the Lord who is even more powerful than those difficult circumstances. Worship God in faith and recognize his power and his might. This is the type of fear where you know that you can't stand on your own power, can't stand on your own ability, yet you have the courage to be in his presence and to do those things that seem to be, well, I'll call it abnormal. You know what I mean? Those, I always get amazed when I see a video of firefighters. You've got this fire raging, you know what all of our instinct is? Run away. But yet, in faith, they go into it. How do you get such courage? I believe part of that comes from a relationship with the Lord. Another part of that, what is his truth that he provides protection? But there's another piece. Good old-fashioned training, right? What is the truth of the circumstances? And when Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life, there is more than one aspect of truth there. Do we understand the truth of the circumstances that we are facing? And when we come to know the truth now, we can be wiser in handling those. And that provides us courage, even though the circumstances may want to Enlicit fear within us. We can rise above it. It's that faith. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me. It is that faith in the Lord and all that He provides us. I also believe that 1 John chapter 4, verse 18 is very beneficial here. It says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. The love of God. You see, I believe that love and faith go hand in hand. They work together. Simple question for you today. Do you love God? And I assume, since you're sitting in here, the answer is yes, whether you nod your head or not. <laughs> right? Does God love you? Mm. Sometimes people will have difficulty with this concept of triune God. So when people have that, what I will do is just change the question slightly, and you may want to use this in your life when you have conversations with people. Do you love Jesus? You see, people have a easier concept of connecting with Jesus and what he has done for us. And does Jesus love you? You see, Jesus is God with flesh on. Do you feel safe in the presence of Jesus? And I hope the answer is yes. And if somebody says no, then it may be reasonable for you to say something like, well, let me introduce you to the Jesus that I know. 
It's a simple opportunity to share faith and the refuge that you have, the one who gives you strength in the face of fear, that gives you courage to face whatever our circumstances are. Here's a couple of brief things for you. Jesus accepts all people. You see, sometimes people get into this uh, dilemma because of sin in their life that they don't feel that they're accepted, or there could be other circumstances why they feel they are not accepted. Jesus says it doesn't matter who you are, where you are from. It doesn't matter what your nationality is or language or any of that. He accepts all people. Second, Jesus calls all people to repent of their sins and to receive his forgiveness. Now, sometimes people will get this idea in mind that what they have done is too great to be forgiven. Oh, I was there at one point in time in my life. That was a great time of struggle. And it was challenging for a pastor or pastors to get through to me that there is no sin that is so great that Jesus does not forgive it. No matter what you have done, he forgives. Sometimes we're the cause of our own mess in our life. Sometimes we react to our circumstances in an unhealthy manner. Sometimes you think you're all right. You went and you did something that you felt like doing and it didn't turn out right. You been there? <laughs> you, you have all the information, you think you're doing the right thing and it turns into a mess. Here's the deal with Jesus, it's real simple. You repent of your sins and you ask him to lead you in changing your life. He forgives you and he's going to lead you into a better life. That is his promise. Number three, Jesus invites all people to come to him with their burdens and troubles. This is in prayer. No matter what is going on in your heart, he is ready to listen and provide a place of rest. You tired? Jesus is the place to go. His arms are open to support you. Number four, Jesus encourages all people to seek his word of truth. He desires to teach you so that you can grow and mature. And here's the thing. Sometimes people think that this is supposed to be an easy thing. Well, he never promises that it's going to be easy. What he promises is that he will be with you, and he's going to lead you, and he's going to guide you, and you're going to experience something you have never experienced before. Hmm. It's part of what he was saying there in the gospel. These uh, Jewish people were saying, well, we've never been slaves, so how can you free us? Ha ha, and Jesus says, doesn't matter. You see, if you have sinned, you're actually a slave of sin, and you need to be freed. And if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. You are going to experience something you've never experienced before. That's amazing. Freedom. You know, in America, we kind of like that word, don't we? Freedom. Usually, we're talking about that around the 4th of July, and but well, we got this challenging thing coming up here called an election where we practice our freedom. Um, so, I wish you well with that. I'm not saying, I'm not getting into any politics. I, I asked people months ago that we're not going to talk about politics until after the election. Voting is simply one of our exercises of freedom is all that I'm saying here. But there is more to this. Freedom is a result of faith in Jesus Christ. It is not about our outward circumstances of freedom, 
but rather having our heart free. If our heart is free, it doesn't matter what our circumstances are. We get to experience freedom in Jesus Christ always. Now that's often the opposite of what people think about with Christianity. Many people focus upon, when they think of Christianity, all the rules. You'd be amazed at how many times I've had conversations about um, Christianity and people are going, would ask me, well, pastor, how do, you, how do you deal with all the rules? What do you mean all the rules? Well, you know, you, you can't go to the movies. What do you mean I can't go to the movies? Well, you, you can't drink. Well, what do you mean you can't drink? Uh, you, can't, you can't have any fun. You can't go to dances. You can't, and they go down this laundry list of things. And do you know what my temptation always is? Here's a Bible, read it, show it to me where it says that. Because most of the time, the rules that people think there are, it's not even in the Bible. Sometimes we get into this whole thing that we imprison ourselves. When I was a child, my parents set certain limitations and boundaries. Now, my mom's sitting in the crowd here, so I promise you, Mom, I am not going to embarrass you with this. Okay? I promise. As I was growing up, there were certain limits, and it, and it changed as I grew. So there were so many blocks from my house that I could go, and there were certain street limitations, and I knew what those were. Now, there were other items such as you're only permitted to go into certain houses, and they had to be approved ahead of time. And there were certain circumstances you could go in. You had to be a good guest. There were certain rules or expectations of behavior. And within those boundaries, I was free to do lots and lots of things. We happened to have a woods that was to the east of our house and to the south of our house, and I could go and explore in those woods, either myself, uh, by myself, or with my friends. There was a park within one block. I could go and, and play in the park. I could gather with friends. I could talk to and learn from my neighbors. I could work on projects, and there was much more that I could do. I had lots of freedom within the boundary. Now, the families and the parents, they knew one another, and there were all sorts of different relationship dynamics to learn and to manage with different families. But there were certain things that were generally a given. Number one, you number two, inside the limits, it was a safe place, and people would look out for each other. Number three, you could be at peace because you knew you were safe, so you could move around and enjoy your life safely. And number four, you could be creative, learn and grow with lots of other friends and families. And number five, <laughs> gotta love this one. If you broke the rules or the limitations, you would be in trouble with your friends and your neighbors, and then when you got home again, you expected to get in trouble again. Because all of the families, they knew one another. And it was a joint community. The point is the same for our Christianity. There is great freedom when you know there are clear boundaries. Great trouble and fear are created as people seek to, well, change their lot in life through force or through disregard of what their impact or their choices is going to be on others. When we know whose we are, that we are the Lord's, when we know that life is extremely valuable and we consider others' lives valuable, then we can obtain the courage to live in love towards each other. 
what may be viewed as binding restrictions by some, and as I was growing up and uh, got into other schools, some of my friend, new friends would say, how, how could you live with such restrictions? Well, I thought it was great, personally. Hmm. The restrictions, the boundaries, actually becomes a source of freedom. And it gives you time and energy to be used in a positive way. It actually gives you a heart of courage. It enables you to be creative because you're working with those other people that know more than you and you learn at their um, encouragement. And all of this helps us to understand our world and to be able to develop creative solutions to challenges in life. No matter what, through faith in Jesus Christ, we are freed of our sins. And he gives us courage to worship him. He also calls us to love and to accept one another just as he loves and accepts us. Doesn't matter how chaotic our world is out there. You have all of this chaos going on. But in him, we have a refuge. And he calls and he gathers all of us to be together in that city of God. May we cherish that always. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us rise and we'll confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, for our offering announcement, just the standard uh, offering plates are in the front or in the back. Um, if you wish, you can mail your support of the church into the office uh, by means of check or use the online giving options. Uh, and just want to express thanks to you for your support of this ministry. I know with COVID-19, things are a little odd, shall we say? Um, so thank you. Hopefully you find that we are doing things in a safe way for you, um, trying to be here to provide support, uh, spiritual support and encouragement for you. And if there's anything you need, contact me and let me know. Uh, let us sing Amazing Grace. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, there are indeed circumstances within our lives that can bring great fear and tension, anxiety to us. We thank you for being there for us always, that you give us a refuge, a place that we can go where we know that we are safe, a place that we can go that we know we are welcome and accepted, a place that we can go and know that we are forgiven, a place that we can go to learn and grow and develop. And Lord, we ask you to lead us and guide us every day in our lives. Help us to be able to face whatever challenges we have before us with the courage that you provide. And Lord, we lift up to you all of those people that we have on our health concern list today. 
Mike Phillips, Dick Dewar, Mike O'Connor, Leroy Profrock, Nina Wood, John Martinez, Philip James, Sandy Haynes, Vicki Weiss, Shirley Allen, Chris Finley, Marcia Neary, Kurt Yeager, Joe Della Valle, Alan Volker, Amelia Della Valle, Nelson Goodrich, Ruth Hacker, John Eckel, Jim Stowitzki, Laura Russell, Jen Calandra, Laura Phillips, Cloyd and Shirley Snyder, Ron Ball, Emily Crane, John Hacker Jr., Don Schneider, Eugene Zem, Marlene Sybil, Barb Young, Charlotte Lyons, James Lort, Loretta Levan, Nathan Hembry, and Sharon Monti. We ask you, Lord, to be with all of these people in their various circumstances in life. Some are recovering from surgeries. Some are dealing with cancer. And there's a great variety of other situations in life. We ask you, Lord, to open your almighty hand and provide healing. Healing of body, but also healing of soul, healing of spirit. Be with them in their time of difficulty. Be with their families and friends as they provide support. Be with the medical providers in the work that they do. And Lord, we lift up to you Gail Burdick as he is now in hospice care. Gail is the brother-in-law of Joyce Marr. We ask you, Lord, to be with Gail and help him to be comfortable during his last days here on earth. And may you work something special out of these days. We don't know what it is, but we ask you, Lord, to touch the hearts of people that are around him, that you work in your almighty way. And Lord, we lift up to you the family and friends of Evelyn Haynes as she has gone to her heavenly home. We thank you, Lord, for calling her to faith and to being with her for so many years in her life. We ask you, Lord, to bring comfort and peace to all those that mourn this loss. But help us to remember that she is indeed celebrating in heaven as she is starting her new and eternal life in Jesus Christ. And Lord, we ask you to be with our country as we continue to journey through these challenges of COVID-19, but also through the election and other circumstances. Be with our leaders and give them wisdom. Be with all of our citizens. Give us peace of heart and mind that we work together with respect and decency and love toward one another. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.